Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys Report, NFC East Rumors Edition. I am your host, Tom Downey. We'll start things off with the Dallas Cowboys side of things, because where else are we going to start? And let's talk about David Irving, who if you pay attention, and if you're subscribed to the Cowboys Report, you already knew this was probably going to happen, but David Irving is facing a suspension. The Cowboys are not expected to bring David Irving back. And again, this really isn't new news per se. We've known this for quite some time, because remember... David Irving was missing meetings and missing rehab and not showing up to his drug tests. Shouldn't have been a surprise that David Irving is indeed facing a suspension. Again, this has been known, and it's a big reason why the Cowboys don't want to bring back David Irving. At a certain point, you just blow too many chances. That's the reality of the situation for David Irving. Now, if the Cowboys want to still help David Irving because he clearly has some troubles, I am all for that but you don't have to re-sign him. I know it's tempting because the impact is there in two games. He had a sack. He's shown the flashes at times. But the best ability is availability. And David Irving has not had availability at any consistent point throughout his NFL career. It's always something with Irving. Now, this does continue to have a needed defensive end in light of the Randy Gregory side of things, but we already knew David Irving was not going to come back. I've told this to you guys for months. Antoine Woods, Malik Collins, Daniel Ross are the only three guys locked in at defensive tackle. So at minimum, you need more depth. In reality, especially in light of Randy Gregory's suspension, you probably need to find an impact defensive lineman. As for Irving himself, let me know in the comments section, what should the Cowboys do with Irving? Type R for re-sign, type D if you just want to dump him and not bring him back. I'm on the D side. I hope he's able to get his life in order. I know he's dealt with quite a bit. But from an on-field football perspective, it is simply no longer worth it. It is time for David Irving to go find a different place to play football if he even gets to play football again. I don't know what NFL teams are interested right now in Irving, especially with the suspension likely coming down. All right, for updates on the Giants, Redskins, and Eagles, I'm going to throw it over to my main man, Thomas Mott. Let's jump right into all the other NFC East teams rumors, starting with the Philadelphia Eagles and a wide receiver rumor here, starting off with John Ross. Could the Eagles be interested in trading for John Ross? Now remember, he was drafted by the Bengals ninth overall in 2017, but the Bengals now are reportedly trying to move him. This is the guy, if you remember back to the 2017 Combine, he ran the 4.1940 at the NFL Combine in front of scouts. This guy is blazing fast, is supposed to be a burner, but suddenly, after one year, or after two years, essentially, the Bengals are looking to get rid of him. Here are the career stats. 21 catches, 210 yards, and seven touchdowns. So not exactly off-the-chart numbers here. And also, if you go into some more, some more numbers, essentially, he drops a lot of passes. A lot of passes thrown his way are interceptions. So the numbers all around John Ross are not that great, but the speed, the age, and the rookie contract are really good. Now let's go to the Eagles' current wide receiver depth chart. This is where it gets a little bit interesting. We see there Alshon Jeffrey. He's the obvious number one. He signed an extension. He's going to be there long term. Aguilar is still signed throughout 2019. There's talks he could be a trade target, but I think he stays. Then you have Mac Hollins injured basically all of last year, still on his rookie deal, so he stays. And then Shelton Gibson will also be on the roster in 2019. So you look at that core right there. They need to add another wide receiver. Whether that's bringing back Jordan Matthews or Golden Tate, John Ross could be in the mix here because, like we said, rookie contract. He's cheap. You don't have to pay him a lot of money. The Eagles have cap problems. They're trying to get underneath the cap right now. And the Bengals already seem to have given up on him, so you could probably pay a mid to late round pick for him and not spend a lot of you know, draft assets to go ahead and get John Ross. The Eagles need that over-the-top burner. They thought Mike Wallace was going to be that this past year. He was injured, did not turn out to be that. John Ross could be a really cheap but good alternative for the Eagles to trade for here in the next couple of weeks. Question for you guys today. First one, should the Eagles trade for John Ross? Let me know. Our second and final rumor here for the Eagles revolves around Tim Jernigan, the defensive tackle, and I've been hearing this for a couple of weeks that the Eagles are not expected to re-sign Tim Jernigan. The NBC, of course, is reporting this most recently. The Eagles are not expected to re-sign Jernigan, and the main reason is, is cap space. We talk about it all the time with the Eagles. They don't have a lot of maneuverability 
to get underneath the cap. Jernigan is one of the ways they could actually get a lot of cap space because if they were to release him, they'd save $13 million against the cap. And as we keep saying, they're currently over the cap. Now, come draft time, the Eagles will be underneath the cap. There are some other moves they can make to have some spending money. Not a lot, but a little bit. But cutting Jernigan is one of those to be able to essentially get the Eagles not only under the cap, but with the ability to maybe go out and get a couple of cheaper free agents. So when you look at Tim Jernigan, he signed the four-year deal in 2017, as we look at the numbers here, but they suffered a pretty bad back injury this past year that basically held him out for the beginning part of the year. Now, when you look at the numbers though, the Eagles' run defense is better with Tim Jernigan. Since week 15, week 15 this past year when he returned, the Eagles' run defense only allowed 2.76 yards per rush. Him next to Fletcher Cox was a really, really good tandem when Jernigan was healthy. Now you go back to their Super Bowl run, and Jernigan was an integral part of that one back in 2017, and that's when he got the big contract extension. But now, he cost a lot of money. And, like we said, he's injury prone, so the Eagles are most likely going to let him go and probably go to the draft to fill their defensive tackle needs. Because, again, Jernigan's good, but it's looking like it's going to be cheaper to let him go and probably better for the team overall. So now we're looking at Tim Jernigan, and then also Brandon Graham is mentioned to be being released as well. So the Eagles' defensive front is going to look a lot different here in 2019. Let's move on to the, to the New York Football Giants, and a cornerback is being rumored to be interested in joining the Giants, have mutual interest there with New York, Captain Munderland. Now, Munderland was just released by the Panthers this week, and the Giants, listen, they could use help in the secondary. We know they're going to let go of Landon Collins, so you need someone not to fill his shoes, but just you need to add talent to the secondary in New York. Right now, the Giants have about $27 million in cap space. That's enough to make some moves, and so could Captain Munderland be one of the moves this offseason? Let's go to his player, player profile while he was in Carolina. 520 of his 630 snaps were from the slot last season. He's a purely slot corner. That's where you're going to play him. He signed a four-year contract with the Panthers in 2017, but now they need cap help, so they're trying to get rid of you know some extra guys, and he's one of the ones that, that they're going to cut or that they already did cut. But seeing that he did sign a contract in 2017 tells me that the Panthers really liked what they saw from Captain Munderland, and he's a guy that could really help the New York Giants. Now, the Giants already have a slot corner in Grant Haley, but Captain Munderland, in my opinion, is just a little bit better. And with the price that he could be, which could be pretty cheap, this could be a pretty good option for the Giants to kind of get the, the free agency offseason period started and make an addition to the roster. That's always the goal here in the offseason. Are you making positive additions to your roster? You want to go to free agency, find a guy, and he's got to be an upgrade. And Captain Munderland, in my opinion, would be an upgrade for the Giants. What do you guys think? Giant fans, it's your turn. Do you guys want Captain Munderland? Do you think you need Captain Munderland, or will you be okay with Grant Haley? I want to hear from you guys. Let me know. And now, we kind of move to our next Giant topic. We basically hit on it a little bit earlier because it applies to the Eagles. And this is, could the Giants be interested in current Eagles defensive end Brandon Graham? Now, he's going to be a free agent, but the reports are the Eagles might not re-sign Graham. So he's going to go to free agency and kind of fill in that pretty good free agent pass rusher class. Now, the Giants, it's interesting here. If you go back to 2015, when Brandon Graham, who was drafted by Philadelphia, mind you, then he re-signed with the Eagles in 2015, he almost signed with the Giants in 2015. It was down to the Giants or the Eagles, and Graham decided he wanted to stay with the team that drafted him, so he decided to not be a Giant. But I was told it was really, really close. So now, in 2019, could it finally be time for Brandon Graham to go to the Big Apple? Brandon Graham does turn 31 this year. That's getting a little up there for a pass rusher, and his 2018 stats weren't that great. Only four sacks, 29 tackles. He did have 11 quarterback hits, though, and that's what he's really good at quarterback pressures and he's also really good at stopping the run coming from the edge an edge rusher who can also stop the run Brandon Graham is both of those things the issue like we said 31 years old his best season was 2017 during the Super Bowl year so the question is do you pay him like he's a true number one 
four down defensive end, three down defensive end, or do you pay him and bring him in as kind of a rotational player like the Eagles started using him as and mix him in with other younger pass rushers because he's just going to get older and his numbers... When they start to go downhill, it's very hard for defensive ends to kind of turn that around and come all the way back up. But what do you guys think? This is an interesting sign for me if I'm the New York Giants. Should the Giants sign Brandon Graham? They could use some help on the, the pass rush side. He would be stealing him away from a, 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 a divisional opponent like the Eagles. So it makes a lot of sense. Question is, will the Giants pull the trigger? Do you guys think they should? I want to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comment section down below. That brings us time for our final team. As always, we finish up with the Redskins and, of course, quarterbacks. This is, you know, when, when, you're, when you're looking up and you're trying to figure out what's going on in the nation's capital with the Redskins, what are they focusing on right now? Where are all the rumors? I'm telling you guys, every week I keep coming back to this, quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. And another one that's been rumored here, Tyrod Taylor. Redskins might be interested in signing the former Bill and former Brown, Tyrod Taylor. Now, Taylor, again, set to be a free agent, completely unrestricted. Alex Smith, we say it every single week, keep reiterating it, probably not going to play in 2019. And the Redskins... About $17 million in cap space right now. Of course, that can always be moved up with more cuts, but $17 million is enough to go and sign Tyrod Taylor if they wanted to. Let's go to our graphic here in the Redskins quarterback depth chart. You have Alex Smith. He signed through 2019, but he won't play. Colt McCoy is the only other quarterback who has a contract through 2019. They signed Josh Johnson in the offseason. That could be someone that you could bring back for really cheap, but currently right now he is going to be a free agent so obviously they got to bring a quarterback in one way or another and Tyrod Taylor could be that guy the stats are pretty good during the career you know if you look at kind of pick and choose the stats that you'd like to see 62.3 percent completion percentage a 1.91 TD to interception ratio and an 87.3 QBR listen Tyrod Taylor has been on bad teams Buffalo and then at the start of Cleveland when they were already really wanting to play Baker Mayfield so you kind of can't knock him for that but he goes right into that list of free agent quarterbacks that the Redskins could be targeting last week we talked about uh, Teddy Bridgewater so now you throw up Teddy Bridgewater versus Tyrod Taylor kind of leading Tyrod Taylor more experience and less injury prone and he could be a guy to come in and actually win some games for Washington so I want to know what you guys think if you're in the nation's capital if you're a Redskins fan the whole quarterback situation is, it's its tough this year, guys. And so drafting someone, signing someone at free agency, just sticking with Colt McCoy, what do you guys think? This one kind of ties in with our final rumor. And it might be the fact that the Redskins, what I'm hearing, could be keying in on drafting a quarterback, not this year, which we said last week, but actually be gearing up for next year in 2020 and the rumors are starting to float around that this could be true we said it just a couple seconds ago the Redskins have one healthy quarterback on the roster they have the 15th overall pick so conventional wisdom is oh they'll just draft someone this year what I'm hearing is that's not the case they could be looking to trade down or even out of the first round this year to acquire more assets for next year now why here's the reason let's go to the graphic list first the 2019 quarterbacks. We know Haskins, we know Murray. Both of them are probably locks to be top 10 picks, in my opinion. Then you have Locke and guys like Daniel Jones, and you know, you're throwing Jared Stidham and Will Greer. The second tier of quarterbacks in the 2019 draft is not that great. After Haskins and Murray, then you kind of have a little bit of a fall off. Now, give or take, some people are high on Drew Locke, some people are high on, 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 on Daniel Jones. My opinion, it's Murray, Haskins, and then everybody else. Redskins could be seeing the same thing because one year from now, here's the other list, 2020, Tua, Justin Herbert, Jake Fromm, Jacob Eason. There are good, good, and even elite quarterbacks coming out in 2020. We know that Tua is going to be highly sought after. Justin Herbert is probably the best physical prospect in the 2020 draft. And Jake Fromm from Georgia, all he's done is one ever since he's been a freshman there. So you have three guys instead of two, and three that I would say are already better than the two that are coming out of the draft this year. So here's what Washington could do. Like we said, trade out of the first round, trade back this year, acquire extra picks in 2020, go sign a guy cheap like Tyrod Taylor or Teddy Bridgewater, kind of have him as a bridge quarterback. You know, you win six to eight games this year. Not the best, 
but you're set up to make a trade into the top five in 2020, and then you're able to draft Tua, Justin Herbert, or Jake Fromm, and you have your franchise quarterback for 10, 15 years to come. So, Redskin fans, what should the Redskins do? Are, let's go with this question. Do you think that the Redskins should trade back and therefore go after a quarterback in 2020. What do you guys think? Trade back, get extra picks for 2020, or just say, nope, we're gonna get our quarterback right now in 2019, I need a quarterback now. I, like I said, I go through every single comment. Uh, you might not see me comment back, but I am looking, because I wanna gauge where the fans are thinking here in the NFC East, as I do every single week. So be sure to subscribe to Chat Sports, come on back next week. Of course, we have a lot of great content before next week, you can check all that out, of course, at our channels, but, NFC East rumors, same time next week. We'll break all the new ones down. For Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott. Follow me at Real Thomas Mott on Twitter. Tweet at me. Let's talk about sports. I'm always down. Other than that, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.